Mr. Speaker. I call the Honourable Minister Tony Ryle. Oh, Mr. Speaker, it's a shame the opposition leader didn't apologise for the piece of legislation that his government previously passed, which actually produces us here today. Mr. Speaker, this bill is about the security and the public safety of New Zealand. It tightens up the law, it strengthens oversight, and it limits who the GSB can work with. It tightens up the law, it strengthens oversight, and it limits who the GSB can work with. It fixes the problems of the 2003 Order. legislation. Mr Speaker, the security of the nation is important, as is our public security. And that's the reason why this important piece of legislation is before the House now. And as a result of the select committee process, which was not rushed, it was not needless, it was focused and it dealt with the issues at hand, a number of changes have been made to this bill, which strengthen oversight, limit who the GSB can work with, and tightens up the law. It provides for an independent review of the operations and the performance of the GCSB and the NSIS in their legislation and thereafter every five to seven years. The Inspector General of Security, who under the Labour legislation operated in singular status, will now be supported by a two-person advisory panel, making oversight of the intelligence agencies considerably stronger. No other agency can be added to the list of police, SIS or defence to whom GCSB can provide assistance unless Parliament agrees to change the legislation. This is a significant strengthening of the Labour legislation, which in effect would have allowed the GCSB to work with any agency throughout New Zealand. The GCSB will be required to report annually on the total number of instances where it has provided assistance to the police, SIS or New Zealand Defence Force. Now that's added oversight, more information. And the intelligence agency will also be required to report annually on the number of warrants and authorisations issued. And the Intelligence and Security Committee will, for the first time, hold public hearings annually to discuss the financial reviews of the performance of GCSB and SIS. And in addition, a set of guiding principles are being added to the Act. I think that list, Mr Speaker, makes it very clear that this bill has come out of the Intelligence and Select Committee incredibly strengthened from the provisions that currently exist in the law. We have toughened up this law, we have improved and strengthened the oversight, and we have severely limited the agencies with which the GCSB can cooperate unless this Parliament agrees. Mr Speaker, the GCSB has three main functions, and I think it's important for New Zealanders to know that their public safety and security is protected and contributed to by these three provisions. The first is the information assurance and cyber security that they provide. The GCSB has a lot of very smart people and smart technology. And this smart technology, people and experience can be used to help New Zealand corporates protect themselves from international cyber attacks. Many of our leading exporters have intellectual property, have um, important information stored in their computer systems, and international interests want that information. And we need to use the skills that GCSB has to protect not only those organisations vital to New Zealand's infrastructure, but also the government organisations vital to our public service infrastructure in New Zealand. We know that these cyber attacks are increasing around the world, and already a number of incidents this year have been logged with the National Cyber Security Centre, larger number of attacks than last year. So all around the world, nations are grappling with this challenge, and that is why the GCSB's specialist skills are so important. So this legislation sets the rules around the use of that those powers and those, those skills in order to help protect 
both the government and the key private sector IT infrastructure here in New Zealand. And there are very strict rules around what information can be used and provided for. But that's about helping protect IT systems. That's their first use. The second um, use of the GCSB comes to foreign intelligence. And this is the largest part of the GCSB's intelligence and it's what ordinary people would describe as spying. And this involves the capabilities, intentions and activities of foreign persons and organisations. It's got nothing to do with New Zealanders. It's all about foreign people and their activities. And uh, as the Prime Minister has said today, uh, the contacts that people have with Al-Qaeda-related terrorists are such that we do need to have the skill and the ability for GCSB to... Oh, what absolute nonsense, says Grant Robertson. What would he know? What would he know? Um, so this is important, and uh, we pro the legislation makes it clear that the GCSB cannot spy on New Zealanders when it has these functions. Now, the third more controversial uh, power that this legislation puts with the GCSB is their ability to assist other agencies. And this is where the whole Kin.com situation has come from. Because when the legislation was passed in 2003, everybody involved in that legislation, from the Prime Minister down, yeah. thought that this legislation gave the ability to the GCSB to work with other agencies, such as the police, under their warrant capacities, to actually use the GCSB technology to assist the police. So the police had to go through their processes to get a warrant, but they could use the GCSB technology in order to exercise that warrant. But what became clear was because of that 2003 legislation, the courts found it wasn't up to scratch, and it said that they couldn't share their capacities or make their systems available to outside agencies to deal with that. So the Kitteridge Review, as the Attorney General has said, found, 50, found 88 cases of assistance over 10 years. So that assistance has stopped pending this legislation. And because the GCSB has specialist and unique capabilities, we need to be able to provide that for other agencies. Now, in the 2003 legislation, it was the intention of the Prime Minister of the time, Helen Clark, that the GCSB could make that expertise available to any range of agencies. That's what the law says. That's what the law said to any agencies. And our government has made it clear in this legislation we're limiting it to three. Police, SIS and the New Zealand Defence Force. And what it means is that the police can use, can go and get a warrant and that warrant can be supported by the skills and uh, capacities that the GCSB has. The GCSB can't keep the information because the information is collected under the police warrant. So they can do nothing with that information and they can use it, for example, they are able to assist the New Zealand Defence Force, but only under the rules and requirements that expect uh, under those rules. And similarly, with the SIS, there has to be a warrant signed by the Prime Minister and the Commissioner of Security warrants before the GCSB can make its, its systems available. The information cannot be used by the GCSB. So I think there's going to be a lot of scaremongering from parties opposite on this legislation, because it's all about politics. But actually, this is important legislation and has come out of the Select Committee strengthened because we're toughening the oversight provisions, we're tightening up on the looseness of the previous legislation, and we are restricting who the GCSB can provide its support to. These are important agencies. Their work does not have the level of scrutiny of other public agencies, but this legislation or this bill will allow the Select Committee to uh, have annual review, it will allow there to be financial review, it will allow there to be public, he uh, public awareness, public attending much of that review, and we will also be having a review in the law on a regular basis every five to seven years to review how the GSB does. Uh, this is important legislation. It does make a difference to the security and the public safety of New Zealand. And I think if we can get back to the time when the major parties in New Zealand 
recognise their responsibility to the security and the public safety of New Zealanders would be good, because indeed that's what this legislation does. I call the honourable member Grant Robertson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.